My name is Gavin Evans and this is my review of Days Gone. Now I've heard lots of mixed things about this game. I've heard people hate it, I've heard people in the middle, I heard people absolutely love this game calling it an underrated masterpiece. So I didn't know what I was getting when I was going into this game. All I knew is that you ride a bike and you shoot zombies and I'm like okay that sounds pretty decent enough. This will be a spoiler free review, I will be posting a spoiler filled review going in depth about the story next week, so make sure you watch that as well. But let's begin with what worked for me in this game. The gameplay. I'll be honest, when I first started playing this game, I didn't like the gameplay at all. I, it took me a while to get used to, but once I got used to it, I was just like, okay, I'm, I'm getting the hang of this. The melee combat takes a while, you gotta be prepared to dodge all the time, but then once you get the hang of it and once you pick up an actual weapon, it becomes a lot of fun. When you have a machete and you're just tearing down zombies, that stuff is awesome. The guns, it takes you a while to get any pretty decent guns, but once you do, I was just like, okay, now, okay, now I'm having a good time. So the gameplay definitely gets better as you play more. And I love, loved fighting the hordes. When I first started playing the hordes, I guess I might be alone here, but I hope people start playing with the hordes early on. I didn't get my first horde until way late into the game, so maybe somehow I just avoided them. And at first I'm just like, oh my goodness, I hate this, this is so difficult. But then after a while I was just like, oh, okay, okay, this is awesome. So pretty much what it is, is when it's like a group of hundreds of zombies are chasing after you and like you got to plant traps you've got to sh shoot behind you you've got to throw grenades you got to throw molotov cocktails and it is intense thrilling and you just get such an adrenaline rush from it and after a while i was just like okay i kind of hated how difficult it was at first but they totally won me over they were such a blast and i would have loved to continue playing this game afterwards to fight more hordes but once you beat the game I had a hard time finding any supplies because in order to make lots of weapons needed to fight hordes, the cocktails, you need a uh, kerosene and I could not find kerosene anywhere else. Uh, otherwise I would have kept playing this game for a couple more weeks. So the fact that I wanted more of that element is a huge positive. I loved that aspect of the game. And I also love how the enemies progress. The enemies at the start are easy enough to fight off, but as you progress throughout the game, the enemies become harder and harder. And as you get better weapons and better tools, they still become harder and harder. So the game's consistently difficult in a fun way. It wasn't like, okay, this is getting too hard now. I'm not having fun. No, I was constantly having fun, especially when you get to the part where you're fighting off the militia, I was just like, okay, like, it, it definitely gets better the more you progress. You definitely have to stick with this game because I can see people not enjoying the first few hours of it. I didn't enjoy the first few hours of it, but the game does get better as you play it. And this is such a huge world. Like, you start off in one section and you're like, okay, this is a pretty big open world. And it consistently gets bigger. And once you think, okay, well, that's pretty big open world, it continues to get bigger. Like, this game is huge huge in scope and riding around on your bike is just so much freaking fun. It, there's consistently things for you to do and I like that element of the game. I just liked riding around. It just felt like this big world. It felt like it really came to life in this game. And speaking of riding the bike, I love how detailed the weather is. When you're riding the bike, it feels different when it's sunny, it feels different when it's raining, it feels different when it's snowing. You always feel the environment around you. So because of that, I thought that element was really well done. And I just love it when you're driving and you're like, oh, I'm gonna crash into that zombie or you're just gonna hit them with your bike. I just love the fact that you could do that. So this game definitely has lots of fun elements to it. Another element of this game that I loved was the main character, Deacon. I thought Deacon was a great character. I think Sam Whitwell does a fantastic job voicing him. I haven't heard him in Star Wars The Clone Wars. I know he's big in the Star Wars universe, but I haven't seen that show. But he's really talented and it shows in this game. I like Deacon as a character. I thought he was well written. You easily root for him. He's this guy who's been hardened by the world and that character could just come across as a ripoff of Joel from Last of Us, but he never does. He always feels like his own character. I also like how the main relationship in this game was between two best friends. I wish we got more of them together, but I still liked it enough that it freshened the formula up quite a bit. But the story is where I have lots of issues. The story 
is too big for its own good and I do think it's really messy. Like there's certain characters, like this character named O'Brien who doesn't really have a purpose until closer to the end of the game and just while you're talking to him throughout, just everything regarding him feels like it's just there to fill up time. There's a character named Lisa who just, I thought was just such a terrible character. You can see the potential there but the actual writing behind her is piss poor. And then there's another character named Sarah. She's Deacon's wife before the zombie apocalypse happened and he's looking for her. And I like it at first when we had a flashback and you're like, oh, okay, you know, there's some sweetness there, but man, uh, some of the dialogue is painfully bad. Here, you can have this one back, but only if you promise to ride me as much as you ride your bike. There's also one flashback where she's driving her car and she's having engine problems so then Deacon goes and picks her up and then they decide to head to the gas station or whatever and then they're like, you know what, never mind, let's go back to my car. So then they just go immediately back and I'm just like, so what was the point of him picking it up? Like, it's just so blatant in how manipulative it is. I think there's lots of issues regarding the character of Sarah, and I definitely didn't like how they handled her character in certain situations, which I'll get into in my review next week. There's also a villain in this game, uh, his name is Carlos, and it feels like there's a past between him and Deacon, and maybe I just missed it, but I never got that sense at all. Like they say, oh, I remember you, and we get no flashbacks. I don't think his name was ever previously mentioned. And I thought that area was really poorly done. There's also one character named Tucko, who I thought was getting built up to be someone really evil. And they just do nothing with that character. Eventually, it, they just get thrown away. And I'm just like, oh, so that was it? It just felt like that entire storyline was missing some sort of payoff. And this is like three stories in one. It starts off in one section, and then it goes into a different section, and that's where most of the game takes place. And the game is, like I said, huge. And I felt like there was an obvious conclusion point. Like, there's a point where there's a big boss fight, there's stakes, there's stuff happening, and it felt like everything was wrapping up. Uh-uh, no, the game goes on for like another 10 hours. And I'm just like, okay, I felt, feel like this section could have been another game. It feels too big at this point. Like, what's even the clear storyline? Because now there's just so many different plot points and storylines. You gotta pick and choose which ones matter to form a cohesive story. And it just becomes a straight up mess because there's just simply too much here. And I know lots of people won't be bothered by that. But I play my games for the story. And I felt like the story here was really poorly developed. And when they could have just shortened this game up a bit and worked on the glitches because, man, this game is glitch heavy. Uh, there's a few sections which just drove me mad. Um, there's a section where I got off my bike and I was walking and I guess the bike fell on someone and it put me back to a checkpoint way farther back and I was mad at that. The entire last five hours of this game was a complete mess in my own experience. I don't know if it would be for yours, but for me, it was. The graphics completely started to malfunction. It looked so awful, and my character wouldn't move. It's a gl glitch, 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 and it just drove me nuts. There's a bridge that you have to pass over several times, and as soon as you drive on the bridge, you just fell through. Like, stuff like that was driving me mad. This game, I know, has been patched up a bunch of times, but it's still easily flawed and it still needs work and if they just condensed the storyline and ended after the dam and just worked on fixing the glitches i think this game would have get out in a higher rating because those areas just drove me mad there's also smaller moments that really annoy me like there's one time where i felt like you had to jump into the next building and it turns out you actually have to shoot the ladder and then the ladder went down but you never had to do it up until that point. So I'm just like, why wasn't this set up earlier? Because I was just like, what did I do? Why won't he jump? Why won't he jump through that window? That stuff was driving me mad. There's also this one stealth mission where you're trying to sneak into a camp. And oh my goodness, it, 
It was no fun. The stealth missions in this game are awful. I hated them. Not every game needs to have a stealth section, and I don't think this one needed it. It's like I said, they bit off more than they could chew. They added these missions that just weren't needed. And lots of the missions in this game just felt really repetitive. There's one type where you have to chase all after this guy on your bike, and those missions I never really liked. There's it's just lots of the same repetitive stuff. Once you play this game for 10 hours, except in my experience, the Horde, you've already played everything that this game has to offer. You've already experienced it because from that point forward, it's just pretty much a rinse and repeat of the same kind of mission. And I'll also say that for your bike, make sure that you level it up as fastly as possible because as fastly, as quickly as possible because until you do, that bike has no... It, like if you hit a tree, bam, it's damage. And once that starts to happen, you start to lose any sense of fun. It burns through gasoline in no time. And it's just like, oh my goodness, I have to gas up again. I understand that they do it. So therefore, you know, you have to put time into the bike. But I feel like when you first get started on the bike, the bike itself was too weak. It took me a while to start having fun with the bike. Okay, I have, I have a few other notes I want to go through. So I'm going to start reading them off. Um, not being able to swim, I thought was a dumb idea. I didn't care for the conflict between the characters, the treaties, what's going on. I just don't think that stuff was set up well enough for me to really care about it. Uh, to shoot on your bike is very awkward. It's just like you have to press the two buttons on the same side. And I, I did not like it when you had to shoot someone on your bike. I terribly done. Uh, it took a while to know where to begin a mission sometimes, like, it would lead me towards the spot, and I would get to that spot, and the mission's not starting, so I'm like, what's going on? So I leave the camp, come, and then it's just like, no, you have to go back, and then I go back, and then the mission finally starts. So that stuff drove me mad. Uh, Sarah as a character gets completely forgotten in the second act of the game. She's present in the first half, in the last act, but in the second half, she just feels forgotten, which is real because she's such a big part of the emotional core of this game. Uh, the game goes from winter to summer in seconds and just kind of takes you out of the fact that the game's called the Days Gone. It's keeping track of how many days have passed. But when it's sunny and rainy and then snowy, it's just like, are we just going to, like, are we in December? Are we in November? What's going on here? Uh, I hated the detective mode. Whenever you had to track someone and you had to keep pressing R3 was dumb. I don't know why they didn't just have it so you could press L2 and you could just see the tracks that way, but having to keep pressing R3 was such a stupid decision. Uh, quick save isn't consistent. Uh, sometimes the button doesn't really appear for a few moments. I'm like, I want to save now and the triangle wasn't popping up. That stuff drove me mad. Um, Hard to tell how much time passes in the story. I'm just like, how long have we been here? Um, do, 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 do. <laughs> There's a speech at the end of the game, which I'll go into in my spoiler review, but it was very cringy. This game ends on a very cringy note. And also, there's a few different moments where you're driving someplace and there's a song that's playing. And the moments are well done, but it kind of just gives you a sense of finality, like we're going towards the end of the game and every time it's just two times but those two times it's far from the end of the game uh the fade out after each cutscene looked really bad um having to hold the buttons like whenever you have to hold x you can't just press it it took me a while to get used to it it was annoying at first but after a while it was no big issue uh there's a scene where you have to fight a bear i thought that was dumb um Mission where you have to kill a deer was a complete waste of time. There's a moment where you drop Lisa off at a camp and then you go back to Boozo and then you head to that same camp and then they act like it's been a few days. Like, what? Um, yeah. There's also a few good things that I forgot to mention about this game. Uh, the graphics look amazing. Just the way that the environment looks, it feels really brought to life in such an immersive way. Um, the characters look great. I really like the character of Ricky. I kind of wish she had a bigger role in the story, but I thought she was actually a really well-written character. There's a moment where Boozle gets drunk, and I thought his drunk acting was hilarious and just pitch perfect. Uh, whenever you leave an area permanently, it always gives you a heads up before. So instead of just like, oh crap, I wanted to do all this stuff. When you press a button and like the mission is gonna take you away from this area for good, 
it gives you a heads up being like, hey, you're leaving for good. So you sure you want to continue? I like that. I loved going through the zombie nest. I thought those missions were so much fun. The small zombie dudes remind me of the baby from Brain Dead. If you haven't seen Brain Dead, it's a phenomenal zombie movie. You have to check it out. But they just remind me of that little baby. Um, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah like, like that's about it. Like it's definitely a huge game. There are so many characters and groups of people and stuff going on. And it's very ambitious and I respect that. There is a lot of fun to be had with this game, especially closer to the end when you're fully powered up and you're fighting hordes of zombies. It is just this game at its absolute best. The main character, Deacon, is fantastic, but this game definitely has issues. It's definitely glitchy. There's issues I have with the story, which I'll go more in depth with next week, so make sure you watch that once again. This game isn't perfect. It's definitely flawed, but I still had a lot of fun playing it. I would play it again in a few years. So I'm going to go ahead and give Days Gone a 7 out of 10. If you want to play it, definitely give it a chance. It'll take a few hours to get used to it and to start having fun with it, but once you do, you won't regret it. So, have you played Days Gone? Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you like, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe. Stay tuned for some more videos soon, and Gavin out.